Hi everyone. I'm the owner and creator of multifariousnature.com. I'm Sarah, for those of you that don't know me. Um, for those of you that are coming back, for this is episode four of the Multifarious Nature Knitting Podcast. Thank you for coming back. It's good to see you again. Um, hope you guys are doing well. And I apologize for the background noise. My husband's mowing, so, you know, I'm trying to get this in when I can. So the gorgeous day it is, it's beautiful out, and I want to take advantage of the gorgeous sunlight. So I'm trying to be a little bit more organized this time around. I have um, some finished objects that I did tell you I was going to talk about, and one of them you may see on me right now. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk about that one yet. So the first one is a hat, which is perfect because it's getting cold now, right? It's fall. It's crazy. So this little hat is the first hat I've made with like a little brim, and I totally screwed up the brim. It was my first time doing the wrap and turn method. Didn't do a good job, but that's okay. First time. And this is the Knit Stalker Hat, is the name of the pattern. You can find it uh, online, and um, I think it's on Ravelry, but you can probably just Google that name and find it. The um, artist who created the pattern is Susie Bunnell, and I'll include links to everything uh, down below as well. And this is a free pattern. Many of the patterns that I do are free because I'm learning, and as much as I'd love to support those who create patterns, um, as I'm learning, I'm just trying to pick up what I can that's uh, inexpensive. So <laughs> that's the Knit Stalker hat. It has this really beautiful uh, edging here. As you can see, it's actually a double thickness. This is really nice little hat and it knit up really quick. I'm, unfortunately, the wool, I do not know the name of it or the colorway or you know anything because I got it at a thrift store, local thrift store. It is wool, definitely a wool, super warm. And uh, I was really excited to find that. So that's the Knit Stalker hat. Took me a little while, but once you get going, you can do it really quick. So that was a great hat pattern. Um, if you want something a little more unique than a little beanie, with that nice little broom detail and this neat, it's basically just your knit stitch and your purl stitch. And it, when you do uh, like a couple rows of that, and then there's some decreasing. So if you know how to decrease and knit and purl, this is a great beginner friendly pattern actually. All right, the next one is the West Egg Shawl by Ellen Rose Knits. Another free pattern, which I loved this pattern. It was so much fun. In the beginning though, and my sister and mom can attest to this, I got really upset with this pattern because uh, it has nothing to do with the pattern. She just um, does right away say that the, the techniques used in this pattern are, um, you, it's the short rows, so wrap and turns, and then um, the brioche stitch. And I did not know how to brioche stitch. It's very important you know how to brioche stitch. <laughs> if you don't know, YouTube videos, and I'm going to include the YouTube link, um, if I can find it again, that I watched, and um, that was super helpful for me. Because after six tries and totally failing every single time and going, why the heck is my stitch count not correct? That doesn't make any sense. I actually Googled brioche stitch and oh, wow. Come to find out, I did not know how to count brioche stitches. That's very important. So, <laughs> so a brioche is this fun part here. So it's gorgeous. You get this really fluffy, squishy texture and it's just so nice and cozy. I love it. So this uh, has brioche. Oh, and it also has the I-cord cast on and bind off, which is also a new technique. But you can learn that as well. Um, I use the YouTube videos. She really does assume that you know how to do a lot of these techniques. So if you don't know how to do the short row wrap and turn, um, the brioche stitch, or the I-card cast on and bind off, I do recommend that you watch videos or look at links to find out how to do that. But it's a really nice edging. It gives you kind of a kind of a tube 
if you want to look at it that way because you'll basically it's a, a knit stitch a knit stitch and a knit stitch is three knit stitches that go into the way you knit makes a tube so, which is the cord it's kind of the cording so let's see if I can show you this here Oof. okay so it's very it's a really big shawl but it has that art deco look to it which I that's what drew me to it and it's super long super long and it has this beautiful brioche at the very edge too so I like that a lot and this includes two of my yarns Multiverse nature yarns so this one here is the it's the green the blue green color and um that is uh, balsam fur is the name of that one. So balsam fur, and if you can see that it's there's like a navy blue throughout, and um, green. Which I apologize, the two colorways that I'm going to mention that are multifarious nature colorways, I have not listed them in the shop yet. They will be coming soon. Um, because I just, I haven't been able to re-dye them yet. I just, I'll be able to dye soon, guys. And once I'm able to dye, then these colorways will be in the shop. So the other colorway is Multifarious Nature. That's the name of it. It's this one here. This whole chunk. So this is a variegated yarn. There's this nice deep red in there. There's a deep green in there and there's also a like navy dark blue throughout that's one of the reasons I love this shawl is that it really does showcase different colors of yarn so that is the west egg shawl and the other two colors that I used in this shawl, I will also include the links to, to the companies because I don't, they, I know you cannot get some of these colors any, they were kind of one of a kind. Um, this one here, let me see here. So round mountain fibers is this color, this gorgeous, really deep burgundy color. And that color is maple leaf purple. So they're calling it a purple, maple leaf purple. That's their name. And that's really nice and soft. It is 100% uh, superwash merino. And uh, the other colorway is Main Street Dye House and Fibers. And they did not actually have a colorway for it because they just are messing with dye colors with their fiber. So it's this peachy pink kind of color here it's uh 70 merino 30 percent kid mohair so i don't think you can like buy this colorway or anything but if you go to um their shop in london ohio that's actually where i got these it was on our west virginia trip i picked up these two colorways so you can probably get the maple leaf colorway but this one i don't think you get the color but their fiber is so soft. It's really nice. So, and the lady that owns, it's Yesterday's Use is the name of the um, yarn shop. And I'll include the link to their website below as well. And they're in London, Ohio. And the owner was there um, when we stopped in. And she was so sweet and patient, letting me look at all the yarn and just experience um, wonderful things that they have to offer there. So, uh, she does all kinds of things there. They do um, spinning and dyeing, and she has all kinds of like indie dyers there that you can purchase yarn for from. So really cool place with antiques everywhere. So I do recommend that um, if you're in London, Ohio, to stop in there. All right. Um, next is uh, some works in progress that I want to talk about. So the first one is the Deandra shawl. And these are all free patterns, by the way. Let 
that's and it's by Sab I'm I'm sorry if I'm saying this name wrong, but uh, Sabine Frick, I believe that's how you say her name. If that's not correct, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm using Multifarious Nature Colorways, and this is um, the Ocean Steep colorway. If you wanted to see it in an item, as you can see, it is a tonal different. It really captures that in this light. And I've got one of my little progress keepers on here. It's a little bear. And I will uh, include a link to the pattern below because it's a really neat freeform type pattern. Um, you, I learned German chart rows in this, so that's another cool, good, fun technique to learn. And they um, did explain how to do the German short rows, but I did, again, YouTube. I searched YouTube because I am a visual person and seeing it in action is a great way to learn for me. So um, this is a BFL high twist base is what I use for this. So I'm not super far on it yet, but I made it to the second page of the pattern. So I feel like that's good progress. <laughs> I love the way this shawl looks. It reminds me of water and the texture of water. So that's what drew me to it. And then the other colorway I'm going to use with it because I need more for the amount that the shawl is going to take is pine, which is another multifarious nature colorway. It is a nice dark green. Again, I apologize, this colorway is not listed yet in the shop, but will be soon. So uh, be patient with me, please, and <laughs> give me some grace. I, I promise I'll get there. And this is 100% Superwash Merino. And that's pine. My other work in progress is something else I've been working on for a while, actually. But uh, if, if anyone has worked on a sweater, this is my first sweater, so you'd understand it takes forever to do. So the pattern is by Pearl Soho, and uh, that's an awesome online company which has tons of free patterns and uh, awesome techniques and videos on YouTube. So uh, this pattern is the Lightweight Raglan Pullover. And the yarn I'm using is from Expression Fiber Arts, which you, I'm going to include her, the link to her website. Gorgeous yarn, gorgeous colors, uh, super sweet owner. Oh my goodness, if you haven't checked out her YouTube videos, she's just so incredibly positive. Shandy is so positive. I enjoy listening to her videos every time she posts. And um, these are some of her, it's a lace weight yarn, so I actually held it double. So marling it, that's the, I guess the term is marling when you hold two different colors together and knit. So I have two sleeves, two sleeves done. So there's one, two. And the best part is they're the same length, thank goodness. You just never know, but they are the same length. But the two colors that I am using, I have to look up what the names are don't remember. I wasn't good about holding on to the tags. I'm pretty sure this is something like nighttime in New York. It's something along those lines. Gorgeous deep blue with like almost a green. Like, oh, it's just so pretty. I don't, it's, uh, I don't know why I'm struggling to explain this, but you know, like an oil slick, you look at an oil slick and you see the multicolor. That's pretty much what this looks like in my mind. And then this gorgeous, gorgeous purple. Oh, I just love this color. It's like one of my favorite colors. Purple. It's a type of purple with like rose hue. I oh, just love it. Um, so I have those two marled together and that's what I'm using. And then I have the body, of course, that I'm working on. I've got quite a ways to go still on it, but there you go. And I've got one of my little progress keepers on here. This one is just a little gem hanging there. So slowly but surely, making my way through that, but I'm quite enjoying it, especially on my lunch breaks at work because with stacking that stitch, I pretty much don't have to think about it, you know, just knit away. Um, so now I'm going to talk about some uh, 
the shop updates for multifarious nature I have some more little progress keepers so I've got this little shoe these are all metal and they're very lightweight this one is a little uh, I want to color a fairy just a little fairy And then I have a little dog, because um, for those of you that don't know me, I have uh, two dogs. My husband and I have two dogs, so dogs are near and dear to our heart. So I've got a little dog. I apologize, these are not going to show up too well because they're so darn small, but you'll see them in the photos, of course. These will be in the shop soon. And then I have a little sheep, of course, yarn, sheep. So I've got a little sheep. So cute. And they're all metal. And um, so I have a few stash acquisitions. And uh, that is some really cool yarn. So I am really excited about this. This, I don't know the fiber content. It is wool. And I actually got them from my mom. Now what's really extra special is that these are so old that she's had these for so long. They were from before I was born <laughs> when uh, my parents lived in Virginia. So I don't know where she bought them. I don't know where they're from, except for they're from Virginia and they are wool, some type of blend, or I have no idea. But the colors are gorgeous and they're all kind of random amounts. So I don't know yet what I'm gonna make with it, but I'm really excited to mess with them. So there's three colors. One is this deep kind of a red brown color and then this one is really pretty which eh, it's not really showing up correctly in this lighting but it is like a magenta I guess magenta would be what I would call this it's kind of actually a bright violet red color so magenta Maybe you can see them when they're up against each other no it's still not quite right but that's magenta and then this uh, like a mustard yellow, we call that a mustard color, which I don't know. Mustard is not exactly my color, but I really want to use this in something. So I was like, uh, and I want to use them together. So I'm not sure what I'm going to make yet, but I had to wash them because she's had them for so darn long. I mean, the, you know, just dust, things like that. So I had to clean them and I don't have wool wash. I have not bought wool wash. I have a special cleaner for um, the yarn that I dye, but I don't really want to use that except for when I'm dyeing yarn. So uh, I kind of did some research because I, I don't know, you know, what should I use to wash it? Because wool wash, I don't know if you've discovered this. I'm sure you have. It's really hard to get your paws on some yarn wash right now. I tried to order some on Amazon and it keeps getting pushed like for month to month to month. So I don't really know when I'm gonna get it but so I went to my local uh, just local store grocery store and, and I heard because I heard that you can use you have to kind of think of yarn as hair right because it's wool it's the sheep's hair so you need to use something delicate to wash it with so what I've heard is you can use newborn um, wash like newborn soap um, Usually it's body wash and shampoo is basically what it is. And it's super mild because babies don't really sweat and they're not really that dirty really in a sense, right? So they're not doing what we're doing all day. So I broke down and bought a small bottle of that. And you want like the no more tears, super basic, super gentle. Uh, don't go with just baby shampoo if you're going to do it and take it with a grain of salt. I'm not an expert, but I rec they were recommending newborn shampoo. So specifically newborn. And the brand I went with is um, just Johnson's. You can probably get that anywhere. And it's Cotton Touch Newborn Wash and Shampoo. It has no parabens, phthalates, sulfates, dyes, phthalates. It has nothing in it, basically, is what they're saying. Like nothing bad. It's the no tears. Uh, version and oh my gosh it smells so good but I went with that and it's made the yarn smell amazing and it's very delicate 
so you know it's good on the the yarn it's not gonna damage it so that's what I used and it was very reasonably priced so uh, I do re recommend that if you need something and you're kind of desperate just get some newborn baby uh, shampoo and that'll work all right well I think that's pretty much it at the moment I hope you guys are doing well and um, always remember to keep creating and I look forward to, to seeing you in the near future. Take care. Bye.